Welcome to H&HN Daily. I'm Hayden Bush, online editor for Hospitals and Health Networks magazine. Earlier this month, I traveled to Utah to attend Intermountain Healthcare's Clinical Quality and Accountable Care Seminar in the shadow of the Rocky Mountains. Hospital leaders from around the country came to hear about Intermountain's claimed clinical integration and population health strategies, many of which date back to the system's founding in 1975. Intermountain is considered one of the models for Medicare's ACO program, and I was interested in hearing what their leaders had to say about the buzz surrounding ACOs and other care coordination efforts. I caught up with Dr. Charles Sorensen, Intermountain's CEO, and asked him what advice he had for institutions that are considering joining an ACO. So I think one of the important things we found at Intermountain Healthcare is this uh, absolute link between cost and quality. And uh, it, it isn't the usual link that most of us think in consumer products where you spend more money, you get something that's better. Oftentimes in healthcare, we spend more and we actually get inferior quality or inferior quality costs more. And we found time after time that uh, doing the right thing, evidence-based best practices, and doing that consistently yields better clinical outcomes for our patients at lower overall costs. And, and that's something that becomes very engaging to physicians. So for organizations that are beginning this journey, focus on clinical best practices. Engage your clinical people in working with that. Be able to demonstrate with them that they're achieving better clinical outcomes by following these processes. And you'll find that lower overall costs go with that. I also talked to Intermountain's Chief Quality Officer, Dr. Brent James, who views ACOs as an evolution of the managed care era of the 1990s. Dr. James expressed a measured optimism that ACOs and other care coordination efforts will finally bend the national health care cost curve. When you look at the new federal reform and the cost controls built into it, all of those proposals represent some form of provider at-risk care. Accountable care organizations, accountable medical homes, shared savings models. It makes sense. It's the only thing we've ever done that worked. The thing I really like about the law is the degree of its flexibility. Um, I'm not constrained to just the models that the federal government may propose. It allows the care delivery system to propose their own models. Uh, and at least in theory, CMS should be pretty open to trying them. It's quite broad. We just want to find things that work. And finally, I caught up with Intermountain CIO Mark Probst, who discussed Intermountain's health IT strategy designed to provide doctors and nurses with real-time evidence-based decision support at the bedside. We have limited the interaction of physicians with the computer. Mm -hmm. Nurses currently use the computer a tremendous amount. We're starting to increase the use of clinicians through CPOE, through really advanced, uh, not only decision support, but charting kind of technologies that, that help them assess the variables associated with their clinician or their patient and uh, help them in the decision-making process. So um, I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. In fact, I think there's a very, uh, there's a huge demand for it. This has been Hayden Bush for H&HN Daily. Thanks for watching today, and we'll see you next time.